Before I came into the zone, I was a doctor. For years, me and other specialists worked on treatments for many diseases, but I was never satisfied with our results. I saw millions being invested in the research and little progress being made. I saw countless lives lost because of our failures. At one point, I had enough. So I decided to turn towards new and less conventional methods. That's when I heard about the zone and the legends about artifacts gifted with wonderful properties. Desperate to find something that could help improve human health, I entered the zone to check out if the rumors were true. I was not disappointed. For some time I investigated the healing benefits of certain artifacts, while also gaining a lot of experience of the zone. Eventually I learned about a strange individual living alone in the area. The local stalkers feared him. They described him as a tall hooded figure who roamed the woods at night. Apparently this individual was one of the dark stalkers. I'm sure you've heard the stories about them. They are said to be half human and half mutant. Anyway, this particular dark stalker had a solid reputation. Several times he was hunted down and shot, but every time he managed to escape and survived his wounds. For this reason, the locals decided to give him the nickname of Devil. All of this would sound crazy in the big land, but here it is the zone. I was ready to believe the story, and even better, I started to suspect that the so-called devil was in fact using the power of artifacts to achieve his deeds. Eager to discover more secrets about these shiny rocks, I went into the woods, looking to spy on the devil himself. I did that for a few days without any results, and I was ready to give up, when he finally appeared. A tall humanoid form in a long trench coat, that could only be him. Hidden at a safe distance, I looked at him through my binoculars. The devil was casually walking among the trees. As I was wondering what he was up to, he walked behind a tree and I lost sight of him for a brief moment. I expected to see him quickly reappear on the other side of the tree, but no, he simply vanished. I waited for a bit just in case. The forest was quiet. Not a sound could be heard. Until the leaves cracked behind me. It was too late. Something hit the back of my head really hard, and everything went dark. When I woke up, I found myself solidly attached to a chair, a gag on the mouth. I looked around and discovered some sort of small basement. It had some furniture, but not much else, and at the first glance it was empty. Or that's what I thought. As I tried to shake around to free myself, a hissing noise came from one of the corners. My heart sunk. There an horribly mutated cat was staring into my soul. I had never seen such a creature before. It looked like it was ready to pounce on me at any moment. With this, and the fact that I was not strong enough to break away, I realized I was done for. There was no escape. Suddenly, the cat froze. It had felt something. It was the owner of the place getting back home. I heard him approaching, and then I finally saw him. It was the devil. So you're awake. Good. His voice was terrifying, like it came from beyond the grave. I got to see him up close. He had black holes instead of eyes. Just like in the legends. He went towards an old desk and picked up a notebook that was laying on it. He also took out a pen and started writing on the notebook. 
As this went on for a while, I figured that this notebook was probably the devil's personal journal. After he was done writing, the devil came closer and looked at me, with a large grin on his face. He searched inside his pockets and took out two objects. The first one, which instantly drew my attention, was an unknown weird glowing mass, without a doubt an artifact. Only then did I notice what he had in his other hand, a large knife. All of a sudden, the cat made noises. It was alerting its master of something. Visibly upset, the devil put back the knife and the artifact in his pockets, and walked to the exit. Somewhere close by, I heard someone banging at the door. Hey, is there anyone here? It's us, the Freedom Guys again. Open up, we just want to talk. Come on, it's a fair deal. You tell us everything you know about the zone, and we'll protect you from duty. At least think about it, okay? Stop insisting, brah. The freak's not here. We should just go. Damn it. We'll come back. And next time you better give us an answer. During all this time, I tried to make some noise to be heard by these guys. In vain. After a while, the devil came back in front of me. I did not even have time to react. In an instant, the dark stalker had his knife on me. He vigorously made a large cut on my hand. I wanted to scream. The gag prevented me. Pain quickly overtook my whole arm as blood flooded out. Calmly, the devil put the strange artifact on top of my hand. After that, I'm not so sure. I think I fell unconscious again. I was woken up by loud noises. Somebody was banging at the door again. However, it looked like the devil was not here anymore. Besides, I did not feel any pain in my hand. After taking a look at it, I realized that the artifact was still on top of it, and it had worked wonders. The large wound inflicted by the knife was almost fully healed. I was right. The devil did know about the powers of artifacts. Most likely, this is what the Freedom guys were after, and now they were trying to break in. The mutated cat, who had been in the corner all this time, now looked terrified. Finally, a huge cracking sound was heard. They were inside. To my surprise, these stalkers were not freedomers, but quite the opposite. They were from duty. Two men in black and red uniforms barged into the room. They noticed me as well as the cat. What the fuck is that? Ah, it looks like just a cat. It's not aggressive. At least, don't seem like it. I don't care, it's a damn mutant. If we let it live, it will reproduce and make more freaks. He shot the cat dead. Then they turned to me. The first dutier was visibly interested in the artifact, so he quickly picked it up and hid it inside one of his pouches. Meanwhile, the other one removed my gag. I was so thirsty that I could barely speak. Thankfully, they understood that I was not a threat to them. They freed me, and I was able to thank them when we heard a voice coming from outside. Guys, we got company! Shit, it, it's freedom! As the two stalkers rushed outside to help their comrade, I quickly used this opportunity to loot the room. There was almost nothing of value, except one object. The exact thing I was looking for. Devil's notebook. It was still there, laying on the desk. A single glance at it confirmed my suspicion. All the discoveries of the devil were written inside, including the description of the experiment that he performed on me. I picked it up and carefully crawled outside. It was a war zone, as two squads of duty and freedom were engaged in an open firefight. Without even looking back, I swiftly sneaked out of the area, and when at a safe distance, I ran as far away as I could. And that, my friends, 
is how I acquired the Devil's Notebook. I have no idea what happened to the Devil himself, or to the duty on Freedom Guys, and frankly I don't really care. I would have been more interested in getting back the weird artifact that healed me back then. Unfortunately, I have never seen anything like it ever again. As for the notebook, it helped me improve my understanding of artifacts to a large extent. Most medics in the zone make use of conventional methods, but mostly I don't. Sometimes artifacts are just way more effective.